Hello everybody. Hope you're okay. Um, right, I'm gonna try something new today and look at it on my phone and on my computer because then I might be able to see who is live. Oh, my message just came through from me. Yay. Okay, um, so I just check I am live. Do, 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 do. Yes, lovely. Fantastic. So, <clears throat> if you're watching, um, say hello. Let me know you're watching. If you watch on replay, let me know you watch on replay. Um, if you have joined the group in the last two weeks, a big welcome. I am Sophie Nicole Casey of Casey Maths and Creations. Um, so I am the <clears throat> creator of Facebook ads. No bullshit. Um, I do apologise. I just ate my dinner like really late it took a lot longer to cook and eat than i expected so i've just been like frantically running around trying to brush my teeth you know just in case you can smell chili on me from wherever you are um so yeah today i just want to talk about how to build your warm audience on facebook ads um but also the lovely rachel of rock your tribe asked me um this morning in fact about creating and um, growing an audience in your group so it's not strictly Facebook ads but it does all tie in and you can use Facebook ads to do that so um, I'll be talking about that today so first of all um, I just want to talk about what so what is a warm audience when I talk about a warm audience um, that a warm audience simply means someone who has seen you before so it's like it's the opposite of cold calling so when you when you run an ad to a warm audience, they already know who you are. Um, <clears throat> the chances are they already know, like, and trust you, which is exactly what we want because people buy from people they know, like, and trust. We don't buy from strangers. So it's really important to have a warm audience who we can connect to. And something I see quite a lot. <clears throat> Sorry, this is a really bad angle for me. I feel really fat sitting here. <laughs> um, something I see quite a lot is. Um, and it's completely okay to, but it's not the best way. As if you've never run ads before, to then suddenly try and build up a warm audience really quickly um, with like absolutely no sort of nothing organic, nothing, nothing like ongoing, because um, you're starting from scratch. So ideally, even if you've not got a big promo on, you should always be running ads just to be just to create a warm audience, so that whenever you do want to do something, you've not suddenly got to throw a thousand pounds into ads to build a warm audience like you've already got it and you've been paying for it like small like little by little over time and um, so it is important to to do that um so today what was i going to say let's have a look so what is it yeah not cold so yeah more likely to convert um so da, da, da. so when i talk about um like a warm audience on facebook ads what I'm talking about is a custom audience. Like when you hear people talk about a custom audience, all it means is a warm audience. An audience that's made out of people who are already in your pot, rather than <clears throat> rather than targeting the people by like interest or demographics or whatever. So in when you're running ads, you've got the option to create your audience from either on Facebook or off Facebook, basically. So off Facebook, that means people um, from your website, it means people from um, like your audience lists, like your email list. So it might be Mailchimp, Active Campaign, something like that. Um, it could be if you've got an app, people who use your app. Um, also, it gives you the option for offline activities, but I won't go into that. Um, I don't really, I've never really used it, but you can, you should, you should log all your offline <coughs> activities as well, so that you can really get um, like a really accurate view on return on investment but I'm really not going to go down that road now um, so those are the off Facebook so on Facebook you've got basically everyone so you've got videos anyone who's viewed your videos um, Instagram so people who have liked um, who followed or engaged with your posts on Instagram or posts or ads you've got leads so if you've ever run a lead campaign and collected leads there you've got people who have done that or maybe just engaged with the lead form but not actually submitted the lead um, <clears throat> events if anyone's engaged with your event or attended your event um, or anything like that facebook your facebook page so people who like your page um, people who have engaged with your page people who have engaged with your posts with your ads um, instant experiences and shopping and not really going to go into those because um, they are quite specific but they're just things that you can create on ads and if people have um, 
if people have like reacted or engaged with them, then yeah, you can target them. So, <clears throat> what what I'm gonna talk about is basically everyone. What everyone does is they think what you have to do is you have to build a lead magnet and you have to get leads. And they run lead magnets thinking that because <clears throat> because whatever is at the bottom of this lead magnet is free, we can send it to a cold audience, which is correct if what you're if what you're offering is irresistible enough, that is correct. But if it's just something that you're offering, maybe just something I'm not trying to say that your lead magnet's crap or anything, but if it's just something you've thrown together or if it's something that you've not um, you know, had that much feedback from or you don't really know if it's like great or you've not really got great testimonials for it or something like that, then the chances are you need to start a bit earlier. And this is where a lot of people go wrong because some like nowadays where everything is online, where everyone, especially with what's going on in the world right now, Everyone's just bombarded with ads, they're bombarded with emails, they're bombarded with everything online because the world is now online, like completely. Um, it's, it's like, imagine, I've said this a million times before, you've probably heard it before, but if you, if, you go up, if you go to a bar or something and you're sitting there at the bar, you're like waiting to order a drink and someone comes up to you and they say, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice today, what's wrong with me? Hang on. And someone comes up to you and just says like, you know, hey, your place or mine, you know, you're just going to look at them and be like, who are you? You're either a really funny guy or you're way off the mark. So like giving, asking someone for their email address when they don't know you is a little bit like that. Just because even if you know you've created this really great guide, this really great checklist, this really great something, they don't know it's great. They don't know if you wrote those reviews. They don't know if they're your mates. They don't know anything about you. So it's better to warm them up first. So there's like two main ways that I recommend doing this and it's what I call a free freebie. So a lead magnet, even though it's free, it's a not so free freebie because you're asking for an email address in return. Whereas in reality, you should, you know, you should give value before you ask for something. So what, what your free freebie can be is basically a high value post on your website. So a high value blog post normally and or videos. They're the two that I recommend the most. There are lots of other things you can do but I'm not going to go into them because basically anywhere that you can send someone or something you can give them that you're not going to ask for an email address back, that could be your free freebie. But the reason I recommend a blog is because people have to physically leave the ad and leave Facebook and go to your website if they want to read it. So it means they've already taken that like actionable step they've taken they've already invested their time with that little click and gone onto your website which means they're gonna remember you a lot more they've looked they're looking at your website they've seen your branding um, you're given this great article this great blog post it's like brilliant it's got loads of information on it and you're giving up for free you're not asking for an email address back and they're just gonna love you a lot more then if you send them to a landing page and say, yeah, that free thing I was going to give you, I want your email address first. They're just going to be like, oh, screw you and leave. Well, they might. Some won't, obviously. But obviously, if they're warmer, they're less likely to do that. So that's, that's why I call it a free freebie. And the other thing is videos. So videos, um, I've spoken about this loads of times in my other lives, but they're really great because when you run a video in an ad, um, you, can, you can create audiences of people who have... Um, responded to, uh, who have engaged with or watched that specific video so with when it's just normal ads like if you just run a few ads and they've got some great stories on there and stuff yeah that's great but you can only create an audience of people who have engaged with your page like you couldn't create an audience of people who engaged with that one specific post whereas with video ads you can create people who have seen that one video so if you have got maybe a few different um, products or services or a few different angles that you want to focus on, like maybe maybe you created a video that only focuses on one product or service, then you could create an audience of all the people who really engage with that video and you know that they are good for that one product or service. Whereas if you didn't have a video and you just had people who have engaged with your page, then they could have been engaging to anything. You know, it could have been a post, something you did about something totally different. 
So video is like really good there. And also with video, people get to know the real you. Like I could have written a 5,000 word essay instead of doing this live, but I think this is better because you guys get to see me. Um, you get to see how I talk, where I'm from, that I'm a real person, I'm not a robot, <laughs> you know. Video is just better, isn't it? You get to see, you get to see like the real, the real person in there, basically. So, free freebie, if, um, free freebie, so your high value blog post or your video. If you're doing the high value blog, blog post, then you just run a traffic campaign. Um, if you really want it to look good and do really great, then you could always run it through an engagement campaign first to get some likes on it, to get some engagement. Because um, social proof does help, absolutely. But I, I do find that with, like, with traffic campaigns, it's pretty easy to get clicks. Like, once you've done a couple of tests, you've checked a couple of different creatives, you know, a couple of images or whatever, then the chances are you're going to be getting clicks for a few pence. And like, say, if you're doing Google ads, it's going to be like a pound or two pounds. So it's a really good way to get really cheap traffic. And then there are people who have been on your website. And as long as you use that audience within six months, because you can only create audiences in about 280 days. Is that right? Six months? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 180 days. Um, but as long as you use them within that time, then it's fine. And then, yeah, your video, you'll just run a videos campaign. And you can... <clears throat> you can configure it so that you only pay when they view uh, 15 seconds of it, it's called a through play. So once they've viewed 15 seconds or more, that's when you pay. If they just skip after the first three or four, you don't pay, it's free, it's brilliant. It's like the cheapest way to get your message across. So then obviously once you've, um, <clears throat> once you've created your audience who have seen the video, 15 seconds of it or whatever, you already know that they must have liked you long enough to waste 15 seconds of their time, because the average the average video watch time is like eight seconds so they're like doubling that average before you even have to pay for them so those two are like really good ways of building your audience basically and then <clears throat> I just I will go over the lead ones as well so if you want to actually build like a list who you then can reach out to an audience then you've got lots of different ways of doing it you can <clears throat> create a guide, like I mentioned, you can do free trainings, you can do webinar, five day challenge, create checklists, you can um, write an ebook, you can even give a hard copy away for free and just add the shipping. A lot of people do that, but I think they're actually making money off that shipping, to be honest. I think that's a little bit sneaky. Um, so yeah, those those are like the main lead magnet ways you can do it but I think in general just give value before you ask for anything in back you know it's like what do some people do people um, <clears throat> like in social situations they're like oh I love that dress yeah you look great by the way can I borrow a tenner <laughs> do you know what I mean like people just like compliment people before they you know ask for something it's the same with marketing you just give some value first and then you ask for the email address when they already like you. So um, with the traffic campaigns, obviously make sure you've got your pixel tracking set up because that would be a massive bummer if you did that and then you didn't have a pixel set up. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know about the pixel, um, if you check out the units in this group, I did do a demo of how to do that and also the free, the free course, Facebook ads for novices, I think it's called. Um, that, that goes over a lot of things anyway as well. So between them, you should be able to get it. So, um, let me see, what else was I going to say? Yeah, traffic campaign, video campaign. Okay, and then the groups, so now the groups thing. So it is possible um, to run ads for a group. So all you'd have to do really is to create a traffic campaign and then direct it to the URL of the group. But <clears throat> I don't know if you can guess what the... Um, like what the problem with that is basically if you're directing people from a traffic campaign then the minute they click that ad and go to Facebook you've got no way of tracking if they signed up so you could you could run the ads and just have a look at how many clicks compared to how many signed up but then again you wouldn't know out of those who signed up unless you put a question on your sign up <clears throat> did you come from an ad or something like you'd have no way of tracking how many of your new people came from the ads basically so you wouldn't know um, you might just be basically sending traffic to Facebook because 
The thing about a traffic campaign, this is where it gets quite complicated with Facebook ads, is with a traffic campaign, Facebook will find people who have a history of clicking and looking at something, not necessarily performing an action. So they would find people who would click and probably look at the page that the group's on, but then not click the sign up button. It sounds ridiculous, like who does that? But this world is full of very strange people. So it's a bit like when you're running conversion campaigns, if you're trying to, if you're trying to get leads on a landing page and you run a traffic campaign, the chances are you'll get a shitload of clicks, but you won't get any signups. You might get one, like out of 200 clicks. And you're thinking, what is wrong with my landing page? It's not. What it is, is Facebook is put, showing your ads to people who like to click but don't like to convert. So what you need to be doing is running a conversions campaign and have the action you want someone to take saved on your pixel already at least 100 times so that Facebook knows what action you want people to take and then it will find the people right for that action basically. But if you're sending them to a Facebook group <clears throat> then there's no way of um, there's no way of teaching Facebook what you want it to do. So it doesn't know what kind of people to find for you, the kind of people who like to click, who like to engage, you know, it just doesn't understand it basically. So it's, it's just one way of doing it, but it's not obviously the best. It's a bit like if you're, if you're, um, if you've got an Instagram page and you want to get more followers, the only way we can really do that, because there's no Facebook followers um, objective, the only way you can really do that is by directing, set, putting the link, directing people to the Instagram page, which is all a bit messy as well, because then it's going from the Facebook app and then it has to leave Facebook and you can click into the Instagram app or you've got to do it in your browser on your phone. It's just all a bit messy, do you know what I mean? But it's not ideal. But unfortunately, there's no like building groups, objectives. They probably will be in the future. Um, <clears throat> but I did have a couple more ideas around it. So one, um, one thing you can do is actually have a landing page for your group on your website. So what you do is when they click on the ad, they go to your landing page. So then you've got them on your pixel. They're not leaving then. You know they're engaged. You're not just sending them straight to Facebook and not getting anything from it, basically. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you would create, um, create a landing page, big up your group, and just have a big button, click here to go to my group. And basically you'd have tracking on that button so that when people click it, um, the pixel understands that people wanted to join the group. And then let's just hope that after people have clicked that button, they then go and actually click join in the group. You can't make them. But <clears throat> the, the beauty of doing that is you would be able to then run it as a conversions campaign rather than a tra traffic campaign. So once you've got your organic, you need to get people to do it organically first. You need to get 100 people to go on there and sign up that way so that Facebook understands what you want people to do on that page and then if you ran an ad as a, com as a conversions campaign with that same pixel then that would be perfect people would just go to your landing page click the button <clears throat> and then redirect to your group and sign up and Facebook would know which people to send there so that is totally doable um, and another way would be to run a messenger campaign and just get them in your <clears throat> get them in your messenger you can set up an auto reply or you can set up whatever so that they just say <clears throat> yeah I'm interested and then the bot automatically gives them a link to the group but again with this is you can only track as far as people clicking into your message you don't you don't get to find out how many of those clicked and went to the group afterwards so it's just another tracking issue really um, <clears throat> you could obviously look at your mini chat and just look at how many people who clicked in a message followed through but again it's just all a bit faffy isn't it like hopefully Facebook will one day you know come up with a proper way to um, you know to actually build grow your audience in groups so oh yeah and one other idea was um, if you do your free freebie so whatever that is no, in long blog form, so you've got your long blog post, you could then just set it up so that when people have been on the page for say 40 seconds or they've scrolled halfway down or a quarter of the way down, then they get a pop-up saying, join my free group. 
and or just in line with the text you could have a, a button or a form um, just saying click here to join my free group so you just send them to the high value blog article first and then once they're already engaged and they know who you are that's when you prompt them to go and join your group so that's another way of doing it um, doo -doo -doo. yeah so I think that was it where the groups were concerned oh and just one other option would be but it's a bit of a I don't know if it would really work or not <clears throat> I think it would but I think it's a bit of a long way around it depends on what your object objectives are but you could actually run a page likes campaign and then as soon as people like your page and go and look at your page and they're on there then your <clears throat> your CTA, your CTA button on your page will just go straight to the group because um, you've got an option on there just to send it straight to the group now so that would be one thing and then that would actually be building up the people on your page as well so it'd be like a win-win situation but I don't know I hear lots of love and hate about page likes campaigns people are like they're a waste of money I think if you want to look really believable when you're running ads <clears throat> then it does really help to have a lot more page likes I can't talk I've got about one or two hundred on mine I've never been bothered um, all my work's always been sort of referral I've never really needed to uh, prove myself by a number of followers on my Facebook page but I think for a lot of for a lot of um, companies who are relying solely on sort of like non-interaction I think it can be important if the way you gain your clients and sell to them is by interaction then I really don't think it matters because they get to know you they don't they don't look at you know they don't look at the numbers on your page or whatever um, <clears throat> yeah so I think that was it I don't know what's wrong with my voice it's really annoying me now <laughs> um, but yeah, that was basically everything I had to say on the matter. No one has said anything at all to me, so I'm a little bit worried. I don't know if maybe this isn't working or if no one has any questions. Let me just check. Um, <coughs> no, my phone. Thing. Oh, okay, we've got a couple of comments here. Okay, so, and hello, lovely so funny. I was just checking through my Facebook page to get more info on ads. <laughs> Oh yay, well I'm here now, let me know if you have any questions, or just feel free to drop me a message if you want. Hey Parole, oh I should be doing it for me then, I better finish the task you gave me, time to kick my ass, indeed Parole. So I don't know why my comments aren't working here, very strange, um, but yeah cool, I'm glad, I'm glad some of you have watched it anyway, so let me know if you've got any questions at all, um, otherwise that will be me, and keep an eye out for the next, the next events in the group. Um, and if you do have any requests of any um, anything you want me to cover specifically, then do let me know as well. So let's just keep forgetting. I can't look at these comments. Why does Facebook Live hate me? It's like I've never done a live without one issue. <clears throat> but yeah, okay, that is awesome. Right, well, thank you so much for checking in, guys. Much love to you, um, and I'll catch up with you soon.